everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're here for the first time hi my name is busabi mulayo and i'm a registered nurse living and practicing in nigeria on this channel i film content related to nursing and healthcare and in today's video i'm going to be talking about uterine fibroids now i'm going to make sure that in this video i explain in a way that everyone is going to understand regardless if you're a medical student or not or if you're a nursing student or you're an art student or a commercial student or in any other um field of study yeah so let's get into today's video so what exactly are uterine fibroids now uterine fibroids are benign growths in the uterus the uterus which is the medical term for the womb they range um, um in different sizes like they come different sizes and a woman can have one or more of these um benign growths so what exactly causes women to have uterine fibroids now the general causes of uterine fibroids are currently unknown however there are some um, risk factors that research has been able to identify that predisposes a woman to developing uterine fibroids and some of these are genetics estrogen levels um, in a woman obesity early menage that is starting your menstrual period at an early stage high blood pressure alcoholism diabetes nulliparity that is when a woman has not given birth at all as well as um being overweight now uterine fibroids are classified based on their position or their relationship with the uterus um normally based on anatomy the uterus has three layers the outermost layer is the perimetrium the middle layer which is the muscular layer is the myometrium and the inner um layer is the endometrium now most of this um usually um, uterine fiber growths are in the myometrium region that is in the muscular region of the uterus now there are different classifications the first ones are intramural fibroids these are fibroids that grows within the myometrium they stay in the myometrium then the second classification is submucosal uterine fibroids now submucosal uterine fibroids grow and more or less protrude into the inner layer of the uterus which is the endometrium and this form of fibroid is commonly associated with um, fertility issues because it more or less alters the um, inner lining of the uterus and possibly the placenta may not be able be, may not be able please pardon me may not be able to implant well in the uterus so this particular form of fibroid may be associated with fertility issues another classification of um, uterine fibroids are subserosal which are the uterine fibroids that grows and pushes um out or on the perimetrium region or the perimetrium layer of the uterus you can also have uter um, uterine fibroids that have their stalk attached to the uterus and they are called pendonculated if i'm not mistaken pendonculated uterine fibroids so these are some of the classifications of uterine fibroids based on their positions or relation to the uterus uterine fibroids may be diagnosed with the use of ultrasound scans because this is the cheapest and um, most common um, way that uterine fibroids are diagnosed however there are other ways that can, they can be diagnosed such as pelvic examination and some other measures but the most common one is true ultrasound scan and it is the cheapest like the most affordable form of diagnosis now what are the signs and symptoms a woman might present with or might experience when they have uterine fibroids the first one is that they may experience heavy menstrual bleeding when they have uterine fibroid however that is not the only reason a woman can have LV menstrual bleeding but it could be like um, one it's one of the common signs and symptoms that a woman would have when they have uterine fibroid next is um dysmenorrhea which is painful menstrual periods then they can have bleeding in between their periods like probably a woman has just finished menstruating today and you know a couple of days later let's say six to seven days later the woman begins to experience bleeding as as as, uh, as if they are on their menstrual period they can also experience frequent urination and constipation because of the pressure the um, fibroid may be putting on the abdomen so they begin to go to the toilet frequently and they may experience constipation just like i said earlier another um, sign and symptoms that a woman with a fibroid may present with is pain during sex 
a woman with uterine fibroid may experience pain during sex so these are some of the common signs and symptoms that a woman with uterine fibroid may present with sorry just before i move on if you're new on this channel and you're yet to subscribe please click on the subscribe button to join the youtube family like this video so youtube knows it's a um, worthy video and they push it out to other people who may be in need of the information that i'm sharing in this video and don't forget to turn on your notifications so that when i drop another amazing video you'll be the first to know okay now some of the issues that uterine fibroids may cause for a woman is that it may be an indication for cesarean section when they're about to deliver and they might also be increased risk of miscarriages when they are pregnant and it may also cause um, postpartum hemorrhage that like they may begin to bleed after delivery as a result of the uterine fibroids. One special thing about uterine fibroids is that they grow well um when they have when there's higher estrogen levels in the body that is why uterine fibers tend to grow larger during pregnancy where there is high level of estrogen and progesterone in the bloodstream and uterine fibers shrink during menopause when the woman's level of estrogen decreases so that is one peculiar thing about uterine fibers so how exactly are uterine fibers treated now depending on the location the severity the um influ influence of that uterine fiber on the quality of life of that woman or the size of the uterine fibers uterine fiber may be treated with medications these medications basically um shrink the sizes of this uterine fiber such as NSAID and some um hormonal drugs so definitely they are all classified under hormonal therapy and the um, most effective method to treat uterine fibers as surgery now there are different types of surgery that could be carried out on a woman to treat uterine fibers the first one is myomectomy which is the removal of the uterine fiber itself myomectomy the spelling is on the screen then you can also have hysterectomy done which is the total removal of the womb and this is advisable if the woman has you know completed childbearing if she's no uh, no longer willing to bear any child that woman may be counseled to have an hysterectomy done and another surgery that might be done is uterine artery embolization or embolization sorry pardon my pronunciation what is basically done in this surgery is that um, they more or less cut off the blood supply to the uterine fibers by inserting certain agents into the arteries to block the blood supply so the uter the, so the fiber no longer gets you know blood supply to live or to grow and it shrinks or dies off i hope you get my point so that is all about uterine fibers i hope you guys understood everything i was able to explain to see more of my videos on healthcare click on this playlist here and i'll see you in my next video bye